And we're recording. Hi, I'm John Roland uh, of Highland Park, and uh, what I'm going to show you uh, today is uh, something that all, all kinds of people talk about, but uh, there seems to be a fair amount of confusion and different opinion about how to properly align a saw. So um, I'm going to show you how we do it here in our factory. Um, we've had really good results with this in our own cutting shop, you know, as an accurate way to make sure that the saw is aligned. Um, and the saw alignment is important because, you know, you are moving the carriage uh, along a line that's not parallel with the blade. Sooner or later, the blade is going to start getting ditched. Um, there's a fair amount of saws that don't have provisions for properly aligning the blade. And so when we looked at, you know, the kind of saws we wanted to build, one of the things that's really important to us is to have a really good set of bearings and a set of alignment rails in, in our arbor. So if you look at the design of our saw here, basically you got cast iron arbor bearings, heavy duty, and, and these rails here have these two set screws in here. Now what these set screws allow you to do, you'll see there's two at the front, and two at the back. Now what they allow you to do is you can apply force to the front or the back of the bearing and push it so that you know you are changing the angle of that blade to be able to allow to align it perfectly parallel with the travel of the carriage. Uh, you'll, you'll hear people talk sometimes they'll say put an L square in your vise and, and align to that that actually um, is a, a pretty surefire way to ensure that your saw is not properly aligned because the castings of the vise um, are almost always not perfect and putting an L square on even if you got a ten thousandths of an inch error in the casting of the vise it will turn into something that's more like a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch over the travel of your blade. So the first step of doing this is We'll, we'll snug down our bearings, put with our arbor shaft in, tighten up our set screws on our arbor shaft so everything is positioned properly. And uh, then we'll loosen the rear bearing. And if you come around here and look at the end of the shaft where it comes out of the tank, we're centering the shaft. We use these two set screws to center the shaft in the hole. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but you want it pretty much sitting in the middle of that hole so it doesn't, so it's not rubbing the metal housing. Um, and once you got that centered, we take that bearing and we lock it down. We tighten those bolts up to the full torque. Now, the front bearing, we loosen it up just a little bit. Um, not so it's sloppy, but enough that uh, we can move it with the set screws with ease. So the first thing is, and you can do this with a old blade or new blade, any kind of a blade. Um, we've got a dial indicator. We're working in metric here. So this one's in a 0.01 millimeter, which is about uh, each increment on this dial is about uh, a third of a thousandth of an inch, which is a, th a third of a third of a thickness of a human hair. It's a very fine increment. Um, so I'm going to set my indicator up on the plate and you'll see that I take and I put, I'll come around to it, I take a black sharpie and I put a mark on that plate. Now the purpose of that is that I'm not going to indicate the length of my plate because it's not a Blanchard ground plate, it's not perfectly flat and that won't give me a perfect alignment. What I am going to do is I'm going to pick a position on this in the middle of this uh, this X that I put on there and then I'm going to rotate the, the plate and slide the carriage to the back and I'll repeat this a number of times until I make my adjustments and get it perfectly zero to zero front to back. So right now I zeroed my indicator I'm on my mark I zeroed the indicator, and now I'm going to go back. When I go back, if the dial is turning counterclockwise, it means the back of the blade is further away from the carriage than the front. If it goes clockwise, then it means the back of the blade is closer to the, the carriage than the front. 
So right now as we're rotating back, it's going counterclockwise, and we're not off by much. Um, so can you see the reading on that indicator? Right now it's low, so we're reading 70 on the indicator. So what I want to do is 70, I want to move 15 increments, which is half of it, because I went counterclockwise, which is basically 30 counterclockwise. So I take that in half, and that's going to put me very, very close to zero. When I come back up to the front, then I'll re-zero and see where we're at. And I just repeat this process a couple times until I get it pretty well dialed in. Now, after just one iteration, I'm almost zero. Now, if I am two increments different between front and back, that's essentially one thousandths of an inch, which is a third of the thickness of a human hair. Right now, I am, I got really lucky on this one. I hit it right off the bat. Um, so I'm gonna actually snug my arbor down some uh, because there will be some movement as I do this. Uh, and I can tighten these up fairly tight and still push it some with those set screws. I don't want to move it a lot when I do that, but again, if your saw's got a really good solid tank and framework, when you go to tighten it up, it's not going to move much. Now we moved two increments counterclockwise when I tightened it. We'll see whether we picked it up on both sides. Now you'll notice also I don't touch the tank, I don't touch the machine when I'm doing this because just uh, touching it can, because we're measuring in such small increments, it can affect the reading. So right now I'm, I am two marks above zero here, which that means I am less than a thousandth of an inch out. So that's good enough, my saw is alive. That's seven tenths. Seven tenths of a thousand. All right, hopefully that will be helpful to those of you. If you don't have these adjusting screws, you'll see that it's a little bit harder to get that perfect adjustment. But even so, if you use this method, even for the saws that don't have the uh, adjusting screws, you can get them a whole lot closer and they're gonna cut more smoothly and you're gonna get nicer slabs, nicer cuts. Yeah, and if you don't have access to one of these uh, these dial indicators, we carry these at Highland Park Lapidary. You can just get them off the website.